Hello, I'm Martin Turner. Welcome to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. Uh, and this is a series we're running right the way through 2017, week by week, looking at key aspects of Cork Express in the real world. Now, today, I want to go right back to the beginning because uh, one of the first things that Quark Express brought in uh, when it burst onto the DTP scene uh, was style sheets. Now, um, style sheets, if you'd used Ventura Publisher, you'd have known all about them. Uh, but if you'd been working with PageMaker, they would have been a new thing. Now, most applications today offer some kind of style sheeting, but they don't require it. Uh, and uh, most documents are pretty messy. Uh, you get stuff out of Microsoft Word and every little bit's been reformatted with bolds, italics, different style changes and so on. And although in Quark Express you can format every little thing individually, just like you can in Word or in your other bundle DTP applications, uh, style sheets will still give you the most consistent way of working. Well, okay, let's go to the screen. Um, and uh, what you see is I've got, I've got a document here with loads of different style sheets uh, which have been created. And um, in, uh, in, in a kind of body of, of uh, a long book, for example, um, I might have all these kinds of things. I've got inline table style sheets. We talked about tables before. I've got table of contents, automatically creating those. But um, the basic thing, let's just create a new document here so we can see what we've got, um, is... Uh, on every new document in Cork Express, you're going to have normal paragraph, so paragraph style sheets at the top here, and you're going to have a normal uh, character style sheet. So those are the two kinds in Cork Express, character and, and paragraph. And a paragraph wraps in characters. So we're going to start with character style sheets. So let's just begin by creating some uh, nonsense text. We're going to use uh, insert placeholder text and utilities. Uh, make, maybe make that two columns, uh, actually three columns is better. And we're going to just uh, have a new paragraph there. And I'm going to select that. And uh, I can now work in character mode. So at the bottom of the screen here, uh, I'm going to go to the character measurements panel. Uh, and uh, I, you can see my character, si uh, character type is Helvetica. Uh, my size is 12 point and so on. Now, let's just make that 36 point. Uh, for a title, and we're going to therefore make that um, uh, Helvetica uh, bold. In fact, um, yeah, let's go with Helvetica bold, be old school here, uh, one of the original fonts available in PostScript. And now I'm going to go uh, over here to the um, uh, to the character styles. I'm going to do plus. Uh, and what you then see, I'll, I'll type this in as uh, title, uh, title one. I usually number them. I usually call them title zero, title one, title two, title three. And, and that just enables me to keep track of the different kinds of titles. If you prefer, you can call it heading, subtitle, funny title, title with mice, whatever you want. But I just find it easier to work with a, a, a series like that. So as you can see, uh, it's brought in uh, Helvetica bold and size 36 points. Uh, that's fine. I can, I can save that. That's okay. Now, um, supposing I now want to, uh, without going back to working with it on the screen, just create another character style uh, based on that. Well, if I do based on, based on title one, uh, and make that now uh, 24 point, uh, and I'll call this title two, um, then what's now going to happen, because it's based on, right, if, if I wanted to, I could just take off and go back to no style. It would keep those attributes. But um, based on title one, um, I, uh, if I now change, if I save this, so title two, and I now change title one, so I'm going to do, uh, click on there and, and just use that edit pencil there. I'm going to click on title one. If I now change that, and I say, right, I don't want Helvetica bold anymore. That's really old school. I'm going to go to Helvetica Noi um, Condensed Black. This is a really, really strong font. Uh, what you'll now see is if I now go to Title 2 and uh, open that, 
it's followed it because it's based on. If I, if I turned off the based on, then uh, it wouldn't have followed it, but it follows it around. This is very powerful because what we're normally going to do is we will go to our normal to begin with and we will set the baseline font for the entire document, which actually I'm going to make Helvetica Neu uh, LT-COM, which is a, a very extensive uh, family of Helvetica fonts from a liner type. And we're going to make the normal 55 Roman and we're going to make that 11 point because 11 point Helvetica is pretty much the most legible font you're ever going to find. Okay, so now um, I've not included that in Title 1. I didn't base Title 1 on normal. So I'm going to just change that and uh, make that Helvetica Neu LT Com uh, and it's extra black condensed I've got because it's a wider series. And look at how black that is. Now, that's characters. Uh, if you look at it again, uh, we've got various other things. We've got the type styles. These are Quark Express's own kind of fake type style, so it can make it all caps, which is obvious. Small caps, which it, it does by faking it. So um, what's actually happened is, as you can see over here on the screen, is that these caps are made up of uh, a smaller point size of the same font. But let's go back to this uh, and see uh, if there's an open type version, because the open type features are down here. And as you can actually see, in this case, the small caps uh, is grayed out. And that means that this particular font doesn't have uh, an all caps version, though it does in fact have a fractions version. So um, if I turn that on uh, uh, like that, it creates that automatically because it's still tagged with that. Now you might not want to turn that on, uh, up to you as part of the style sheet. You might do it uh, individually, but it, it's there. So anything which you can set in the character menu, you can set uh, in the character style sheet. And that includes scaling, uh, tracking. You also set the language here. So we talked earlier about the language for spell checking. You can change the language. If you discover halfway through a document that you've all set it in the wrong language, you've set it in English US, and it should be English International, then there's actually uh, up here in Utilities, you've got Convert Project Language. That's for another day. Now, let's talk about uh, paragraph styles. So um, paragraph style, again, we've got a normal style in here. And a paragraph style contains a character style. Now, the normal always contains character style normal. So let's create a different one. Uh, so we're going to do plus. And again, this will lift uh, what's in on the page if we've got something selected from it, or otherwise it will just collect, collect new things. So we're going to call this uh, title one. Uh, and what am I going to do? Okay, I can add a keyboard equivalent. You can do it with all kinds uh, of characters. So if I, if I say I'm going to call this um, F1, uh, then whenever I press F1, it's going to change to that. Now, based on, uh, just like um, the uh, in character style, it bases on something else. So when I change that normal, it changes to that document. Next style, we're going to make that normal. So if I'm typing away and I type a, a title and then press Enter, then what then happens is that it doesn't do another enter, another title, which you usually don't want. It goes to whatever you specify, which could be normal or body text. And the character style, I've already created title one. So I'm going to assign that. Now, if I didn't like that, I could do new uh, and have a new character style for that. Or uh, indeed, uh, I could just do uh, default, which then basically builds in uh, whatever I want into that, and that's not really a, a separate character style. So in, in the original version of Quark Express, everything was bound up in paragraph styles. And if you like that, you can use default. But it's going to be more sensible to work with one I've specified. Now, that's just that. Uh, if we go to the next tab, uh, we've got all the formats. This is the crucial bit, because if you're doing a title, then you probably want, uh, say, uh, six millimeters before, and maybe a couple of millimeters afterwards. Um, we're not going to have a drop cap here uh, because that's more for text. You can keep lines together with next. Definitely, I want to keep all the lines and the title together. 
and I want to keep uh, with next so that if I've got a title and then some body text, I don't have the title on one page and then um, the text on the next page. And you, you've probably seen that in Microsoft Word or whatever. Now, I can do hanging character sets, that's for a different day. I can do bullets, obviously not for a title. Um, uh, and uh, I can also um, uh, set uh, what I'm looking for here. I can set the alignment very clearly. So that's not part of the character, it's part of the paragraph. I can set the hyphenation and justification. And there's a particular standard one in H and J's for Quark Express called titles, and I'll use that, which means we're going to get less hyphenation because you generally don't want much hyphenation in titles. Now, moving across, you can create tabs. What I tend to do myself is create them on the page, on the screen with some text, and then create uh, a paragraph style to go with them, so it's easier to do it that way. And then finally, we can add in uh, rules. And if I add in a rule below, um, then I could put maybe an offset of 20%, of, of, uh, of and I'll get a ruled paragraph. Now, what's happened? Let's have a look. Uh, I'm all on a normal right now, but I'm going to option click or alt click on a PC, which gets rid of any local formatting, and click on title one and uh, we see what's happened now. We've got the underline there. Uh, that's a, a, a paragraph rule, not underlined text. Now, at the moment, as you see, there's no space above. I specified some space above, but uh, Quark Express knows that you don't usually want that at the top of a page. But if I now create uh, a second uh, title, so let's, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's call it title again, uh, and I click on title one, it puts in that space. And so your document naturally formats itself uh, into the appropriate way. Now, um, what else can we do with styles? Well, uh, as well as paragraph and character styles, and of course we've got item styles, which we talked about elsewhere, which just basically take uh, whatever attributes of a box, we've also got conditional styles. And what a conditional style does uh, is it takes a, uh, a character style uh, or a paragraph, I think a yeah, character style, paragraph style, character style, and it applies it based on a condition. So, okay, over here, I've got this um, this little list of numbers. Uh, let's blow that up. Uh, and it's 17 plus 25 plus 32 plus 16 plus 10. What's that for? Well, you may remember I talked earlier about the Chartwell fonts, which uh, turn numbers into graphics. The problem is, if I just did that with Chartwell, uh, they'd all be black. Now, I, I can color each one of these in individually, but I'd rather do it in one go. Now, let's click on this. That's a conditional style I've created, and bang, it's done that. Now, what's, what's happened here? Well, let's click on there. So, um, I've got my conditional styles. You find that in Window uh, Conditional Styles. And I'm just going to edit that with the pencil tool. And so, what's happening here is it applies chart well A, which is a, a, a character style I've created. Uh, I could apply it, I could apply a paragraph style, but that wouldn't be very successful with this. And it applies it through, I can do up to, through, backwards to, backwards through, one character, and the character I'm using is plus. I could also apply it through curse position, conditional style marker, number of text, number of characters, number of words. You can do all kinds of things with this. And all it does is it, it basically goes through to each plus and assigns uh, the particular character style, I've got A, B, C, D, and E, uh, to those uh, one by one. Now, if I just take it off that, I can um, just make that 15 point text, um, it can be quite small, but it'll help us out, and then turn off those discretionary lig ligatures, which is how Chartwell works, and you'll see what it's done. It's assigned colors, as part of the character styles. If I just go to that character style uh, over here um, and edit that, you'll see that uh, in with Chartwell Pies, which is the font, and the size is 256 because for some reason Chartwell sizes are a bit odd, um, uh, and I've assigned it this particular color which is specified uh, in my uh, color palette. And that's extraordinarily powerful. Now, uh, okay, so I've, I'm just gonna go back to that. Um, uh, what's happened here? Um, okay, something's gone wrong here. 
Uh, it's just, okay, let's go back to that. And, and now I've got some shared content here, which is, um, uh, well, let's have a look at this. Uh, Dingbat, and what else have I got? Uh, make pluses transparent, oh, we didn't want that. I've forgotten what I was doing here. But, but I can have another, uh, oh, there we are, that's it. Uh, I can have another conditional style. So what, what I've done is I've, I've done a shared content box. We'll talk about that another time. But essentially, it's copying everything which is in here uh, into here. Uh, so everything which is in there is shared with this. So if I start changing these numbers now, um, uh, I've, got, I've got two boxes here. Let me just send those boxes to the back because um, they're getting in the way. So I'm going to do uh, item send to back. And that enables me to just click on these. So if I change that to uh, 12 um, and this one to uh, 45, this one to uh, 12, um, actually, I think I've not shared this on this one, so let, forget that for now. But, but the effect is that I can very quickly um, style whole documents using conditional styles where, uh, for example, with, with the, um, the mushrooms, bananas, oranges, cashews, peaches, and so on, uh, what it's done is it's added, a, I've got, I've got a, 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 a character there, and it turns it into a dingbat uh, and correctly colors it to go with the chart. Uh, much more we can do with conditional styles, much more we can do with style sheets, but I thought that would whet your appetite. And for those who are new to Quark Express, uh, everyone refers to paragraph and character style sheets all the time. Uh, and uh, you might be thinking, well, I, I don't really get this. I didn't make that journey from the original version. And also for people who've been used to working with Quark for a long time, uh, the character and paragraph styles have generated new things over the years. And especially those conditional styles make it very powerful indeed. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I'm Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. You can get it from Amazon or your local bookstore. I hope to see you again in the rest of the series.